Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with a product opening. So this is uh, what we want to call an unboxing, but since there's no box, we're left with having to show you uh, what you get with a Solgo 115 uh, solar panel. So Solgo is, uh, some of you might have heard of a company called SunPower. Uh, SunPower is now have rebranded their flexible solar panels as Solgo. So the story goes. And uh, we've had a good success with SunPower panels in the past. And now we are also here at PYS uh, also selling and uh, actually have in inventory uh, Solgo panels. We've had a good run. Um, things are going well with these panels. And today I'm going to be talking about the Solgo 115 panel. This is, by the way, a flexible solar panel. Um, for reasons of not making too much sound here on the camera, uh, the panel actually comes in a bubble wrap like this. And uh, to try to minimize the sound, we actually removed it from the packaging. But every panel that we buy actually from Solgo comes with this bubble wrap. It's possible, I also heard that you can also buy them with already pre-packaged with boxes, but since we're doing most of the installs, we didn't need a box, but yes, I've heard that apparently it's possible to buy these with boxes. So maybe that's changed, but here we go. This is a Sogo 115 flexible solar panel. You'll notice uh, right here in the uh, corner, we've got a junction box. So this panel, by the way, is super lightweight. It is only uh, 4.8 pounds, so about five pounds. It outputs 115 watts. Um, it's got some flex to it. So, you know, it's not, the backing is not crazy flexible, which is a good thing. It gives you an indication that you can't sort of like bend it onto itself. We get this all the time. People are like, oh, can I fold this panel and put it under the bed? Well, you can put it under the bed, for sure in, in a cabin, but you can't put it and completely have it flexed. Also, it's worth noting, notice all these little uh, stainless steel grommets everywhere. Um, so that's one way to latch the panel down. We've also had good success with actually uh, sewing zippers right on the edge. Uh, we've also even fastened these panels using actually these sort of um, stainless steel washers that have a UV protected rubberized uh, backing. And when we compress, we'll have a sort of a nice flat headed bolt. Um, then we're gonna have the stainless steel washer and then we're gonna have an acorn nut, depending on if the client wants to have the acorn nut on top or beneath, it depends. And then we've actually fastened this also on canvases using fasteners. So we're actually cauterizing the canvas. Um, we're putting a stainless steel washer with a little bit of a rubberized sort of UV protected. And then what that does is when you compress it, and by the way, the, the, the rubberized is underneath, so it won't even matter if it's not UV, but when you compress it, it provides a really good waterproof connection. Now, some of us are really nervous about that, but let's not kid ourselves, stitching zippers onto your canvas is also creating holes in your canvas. So the moment that, especially if your canvas is older, an older canvas might be drier, right? And as it's sort of more fragile because it's been in the sun and exposed in the sun for a long period of time, it's very possible as you stitch a new zipper on a 15 or 10 year old canvas that you're gonna have leaking. So this is one of the conundrums that we all face when we're installing flexible solar panels on our canvas. If it's new, the chances of leaking are really low, but if it's a relatively old canvas, then you've got to decide on a compromise on, are you maybe comfortable with a small or slow leak in your canvas by mounting zippers and or um, fasteners? Some people I've even heard of magnets. I've never seen that, but some people are talking about using magnets to hold solar panels. I'm not too convinced, but apparently it does work. Just never seen it firsthand. So I'm sort of the, I'm always sort of a little bit skeptical at first, which is a healthy amount of skeptical. Uh, and then I basically figure out if it's good. Um, five year full warranty, which is great. Um, the other thing too, is it's got great cells, uh, great power density for the size, which is interesting. It's about uh, 22 inches wide by about four feet long. So there's another panel that is the same width. The only difference is it's 62 inches. So you can buy this panel as is, as 115 or slightly longer. And that slightly longer is gonna give you to 160 watts. 
if you're curious on the 160, I'm gonna have a video on the 160 as well. This is designed and engineered in Silicon Valley. Um, and yeah, they're really good sales. It's not the most expensive panels. There's certainly panels out there that are at a higher price point, but in terms of good value, this is something to consider. So this is the Solgo 115. Um, we normally marry this panel with a Victron controller. Again, um, there's Victron controllers as well on our website. We generally are always on the side of caution. You could probably get away with a 7510. Um, 75 is maximum input voltage, 10 is maximum amperage. So you could probably get away with a 7510. But most of the time, for cookie cutter reasons, we just sell and recommend the 7550. You know, having a little bit more space is better. And again, if you're going to wire more than one of those panels in series, then you might want to have to consider a bigger controller that is able to sustain the maximum input amperage that this series of panels would do. So one single panel to a controller is my recommendation. And you can do that with a 7515, but you can get away with a 7510. Make sure you configure the controller, obviously, for your batteries. Again, that's something important. And here's a look at the leads. Uh, the leads are um, MC4, and this is sort of the standard in the industry, uh, MC4 connections. Always make sure you check the polarity, and I don't mean just once or twice. If uh, you screw up the polarity, there's a big chance you're going to screw up the panel. So don't have too much bravado when connecting a solar panel. I know when I'm talking to my technicians, I'm like, don't come back and tell me you've screwed up the polarity because this is me telling you right now that you cannot screw up the polarity. Make sure that you know what positive and negative is. Double check, triple check, because we don't want to have to deal with a failure of a solar panel right out the gate. Uh, you'll notice as well, and this is probably my last point, is there's a, uh, a, a thin film underneath on this. And this is sort of the little sticker that reminds you of that. So you're going to have to, and this is why you see all these creases everywhere. This is actually not the solar panel itself. You can actually remove a thin film that actually covers the whole solar panels. So none of the cells are scratched. And that's something that a lot of people often forget is to actually remove the film. Okay. And if you've got further questions, uh, look down below. We've got a lot of related content on solar. We've got hundreds of entries on Ask PYS Tech Talk. We've done YouTube videos. We've got hour long presentations. And if you're wondering if solar is for you, this might be something to consider for your boat. Thanks for watching and joining us. Also, if you found this video interesting, please subscribe. Um, it honestly it does, it does help us to know that all this time that we're investing is actually we're reaching a lot of voters. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for spending some time with me.